Thank you very much and uh, a good morning. Um, this is my hood. Um, it's amazing. I, every time I come back here and I see this, it's just, it's just so beautiful. It's, just, it's almost beyond belief that we uh, can live in such a gorgeous place. And uh, I know many of you and I'm very, very pleased to be here. Um, before we get started, um, we have some very special guests this morning. And uh, they are the, uh, the young people from the Fuji Xerox uh, Young Achievers uh, team, the, uh, uh, the, I guess they're young people from the Spark program at the University of Auckland, and the Young Enterprise Scheme. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd just love for those, uh, for those people to stand up, please. Thanks very much and, and welcome from us all. Um, when I looked at the list of these names, I thought to myself, well, why am I even talking about this? Because that is the most amazing group of young people. They are our future, they're actually the reason that we're here, and they're certainly the inspiration for the, the term Inspire, which is, which is leading us today. So I'd encourage you to talk to these people. They are just such wonderful young people, and they are, in fact, um, exactly what I really want to talk about. So, um, and I have a role in New York, uh, investing in companies both in New Zealand and in, uh, in North America. And, and as you know, uh, with investment, people, um, people, the management team, the people that they are, uh, is everything. Uh, it is the number one thing you think about. It is the number one uh, attribute. So Paul Callahan talked about it, the importance of talent to this country. Uh, Peter Watson's just talked about the huge opportunities we have facing north, facing towards uh, uh, South America, but it's our people that will make the difference. And I, when I look and uh, I come back to New Zealand a lot and I look at the ways that we're organising ourselves to take advantage of the diversity, the wonderful diversity in this country, the business opportunities that that diversity represents, the, the cultural challenge, the ideas, the, the ferment of ideas that that diversity represents. I think it's an opportunity for us to think more about, and I think, uh, and that's why I've chosen the topic today, and I'd like to talk some more about some ideas that, uh, that we might take on board about diversity. So what does it mean? Well, uh, diversity uh, is about difference. Clearly, um, it means uh, difference. It means difference from uh, the... Uh, normative group, actually, it's the you, you're not a diverse person. You're diverse relative to some something else or a, a, the majority uh, culture, for instance. And so, uh, when we think about diversity and difference, uh, it is about somebody who's got a slightly different perspective or going in a slightly different direction. We think a lot about identity diversity. That's normally the first thing we think about, and and often this becomes an issue of number of women on boards, number of um, people of ethnicities on a particular organisation, maybe young people, and we think about uh, diversity in, in, a, in an identity way. And of course, uh, it is very important. Unfortunately, their light is coming in on the graph, but these are, pa these are pictorials taken from, uh, from Auckland, and there is a huge, we, we have a, a huge diversity in our culture, as you, as you would know. Uh, many many faces, many ethnicities, many parts of the world represented. A lot of young people, we're a very young country and, and that's exciting and offers us a lot of opportunities. Uh, and uh, so that, that's the identity uh, picture and it often gets a little, a little into numbers quite quickly. But, but really um, one of the most important aspects of diversity is about, is about cognitive diversity. And uh, many of you who run businesses or um, have uh, perhaps uh, assembled teams before will have thought about this topic. Myers-Briggs and many others, and um, the neuro neuroscientists, etc., the sociologists will talk about the, the huge advantage you get in a team by assembling a diverse set of skills. And uh, this is well proven, and there's been many studies, including one recently by Harvard, who assembled a homogenous group of, of uh, students to do a particular set of tasks, and a very, very heterogeneous, very diverse group, and, uh, and, and measured that over a number of, um, of different um, types of tasks, and came, came to the conclusion that the, that the diverse group performs better on almost every type of, of uh, interaction that they were given. 
And I think um, in our own experience, we know that this is so, uh, that, that there's truth in, in this. Uh, people with interpersonal skills, people with uh, analytical skills, people with creative skills, in a team, together, combining those skills, you will get a better outcome. You get better decision making. You get more lateral, more exciting decision making. You get more perspectives brought to bear. Um, so that's the, that, that is at the heart of why we should care, because um, ultimately uh, teams that are, are homogeneous tend to be, while well, they might be very easy to manage because they're very predictable, they're not creative uh, typically, and they don't absorb all of the information that's out there uh, in a way that is going to help you uh, make the best decisions. Um, in a world where we have constant change and constant challenge, where we are a small country, we're isolated, we have very many issues to consider. Bringing the best talent that we have available, and that many times does mean the most diverse talent, to bear on a problem, uh, will get a better outcome. So, um, when you were, this is really an example of assemb assembling a, um, a, a diverse team to, to focus on a problem, uh, and uh, it is, again, um, turning perhaps to a larger topic, it is a, a fundamental building block of a healthy society that we involve everybody who has the ability to contribute in contributing and making sure that their talents are acknowledged and recognised and appreciated and valued. This is often difficult for people. Um, this uh, brings up the matter of, of uh, the way that we are all very judgmental. And when we're faced with somebody in front of us, we often, uh, in all of our, um, our cultural and sociological and neurological biases, look at them and see whether they're a safe person to be with, a safe person to employ or not. And we often leap into a judgment uh, that, is, that is relatively uh, conditioned. When we were cavemen, um, as humans, it was, it was an important skill to trust people there who looked the same as you, who didn't come from a, a, different, uh, a completely different and strange background. And so I think a lot of, um, of us carry these types of uh, neurological biases forward. And when we're recruiting for a board or a management team, we look at them and say, you know, is that person, is that person like me? Uh, we look to see, uh, we listen for what the cues are that we respond to, the types of language, the types of background, and we make decisions on these, uh, on these bases. And this is, not, uh, this is by no means um, uh, a new thought. I mean, this is well documented um, by neuro neuroscientists in, in many different circumstances. Uh, we had, there's been a great um, one recently where uh, a, uh, two CVs were sent around one with a, um, a female name, one with a male name. And uh, the response from the, uh, from the recruiters to the male CV was, was significantly higher by uh, 20 uh, percentage points um, to, the, to, the, to the female name. We've had examples in, in uh, Auckland of, of the same issues with regard to ethnicity. And I do think it is incumbent on us all to think about the ways that we're thinking and the ways that we're responding to people and make sure that we're not allowing ourselves to be drawn into cultural blindfold uh, situations. Often you get it in, uh, in, in business, of course, and you will have seen this uh, yourselves, I'm sure. Uh, a manager who might have a, a, an objective around diversity will listen, um, will, will uh, allow his management team uh, to, uh, to put forward points of view, may listen um, when women uh, put forward a point of view, but may not respond positively until a man puts that forward. Um, point, point of view forward, and unfortunately, um, even even in this day and age, there are still examples of that. And again, it's about the ways that we're conditioned and the ways that we think about about people who we feel safe and comfortable with. So, um, a great example of diversity. Um, this is what we have in our universities. This is what we have in our audience. The young people who are here are representative of. 10, 12 countries as far as I could see from their names. So it is an exciting city, it's an exciting country. We have very, very many opportunities to think creatively and laterally about this, um, about this opportunity. Um, so conformity, um, conformity, uh, conventional thinking, we've seen it. We saw it with Enron, we've seen it with the GFC, we've see, we're seeing it uh, 
uh, in um, my uh, city, New York, all the time. Uh, people who have a common point of view are persuaded um, by what seems uh, logical without really questioning. And there's, um, this is a classic uh, photo. Everybody's looking the same. Everybody's thinking the same. Everybody's moving in the same direction. And it may or may not be the right direction. And it's certainly not a conducive to being a responsive, resilient, brave country that has to step out and face the world. So um, I put in board of directors in the internet, and this is what I got. And uh, you know, it's not a it's not a New Zealand board of directors, but it could be. Um, uh, in uh, New Zealand, only only uh, nine percent of directors are um, have uh, or basically uh, CEOs are. are or nine percent of women on on boards. Um, this is a very very low number relative to Australia, even um, and um, and and relative to the states and other and other countries. Now, this is a board that would be fine if things were um, were in a status quo situation where we knew that uh, that that the future was going to be the same as the past. It is really not fine in a situation where we're facing so much change and so much challenge and so much opportunity to take our country and move it forward. And I do, um, I do think that we, we as shareholders, we as voters, we need to think about these issues for our country and make sure that we are bringing the best of the talents that we have in our, in our wonderful rich society um, to the situations where uh, they can make a difference. So it's a challenge. I mean, of course, a more diverse um, a group is more difficult to manage. And I think that's why you get boards of directors that are um, all from the same uh, background or from the, uh, from the same golf club or whatever it might be. Um, it's just easier. It's just easier. Um, they won't, they won't uh, create tension. They won't array, raise robust debate. But that is exactly, uh, in many cases, what our, what our companies, uh, companies need. So uh, let's just look at a couple of quotes. Um, we saw earlier today, I don't know whether you remember, um, General George Patton was on, um, was on Jeff Ross's, uh, one of his slides as well. If everybody's thinking the same thing, then somebody isn't thinking at all. Uh, there's this issue of groupthink, there is this issue of conformity, uh, and these are, uh, in, in, in many uh, sociological studies will describe uh, these, the types of conformity and homogeneity that happens in workplaces as being a real beast because it means that, that companies are just not bringing the talent uh, to the fore that they need to do. So the sociologists, um, uh, the social psychologists, minority dissent, even if it's wrong, uh, stimulates divergent um, uh, thought. The stupid question, somebody coming in from outside and saying, why are we doing this like this? It stimulates thought, it challenges everybody, it makes people stand up and justify themselves. And this is terribly important um, in group situations or organisations. So what is the business case? Well, actually, um, for, for diversity, um, in, uh, there, is, there are three main uh, areas where a diverse uh, strategy uh, is, is, really, um, is really important. And the first is, is, is in the innovation area. And I think about the, the, the team at the university that uh, Jeff Witcher deals with, representatives of, of, of many, many different nationalities at our university, all of whom are innovative, entrepreneurial, creative people. Uh, and where, where do the ideas come from? Well, they come from differences. They come from backgrounds that are unlikely, that are clashing together from ideas and skill sets that are drawn together, and then you get challenge and change. And this is, a, uh, this is well known. Uh, Nicholas Negroponte, as um, uh, some of you will be aware, uh, has been a thinker in innovation for many years and has, and has uh, after, after a long period of time, has, has developed a very strong thesis around this point. And I'd encourage you to read more if, if that's interesting to you. So um, we have, a, we have a, a great opportunity in the innovation space. We have a lot of very good structures. We have very good processes. We have an in innovation ecosystem in this country. Stephen um, has shown you the examples of the incredibly strong, innovative companies that we're getting now, now through. And I think now we just have a little uh, more of a challenge, and that's to think about drawing, drawing in the best of the, uh, of, of the, uh, of the innovative ideas and, and, and the people into our teams uh, that can especially make links with the rest, with other parts of the world. 
Peter Watson talked about us being proximate to Asia, to Latin America. We have, we have the ability, we have the bridges to that proximity right in this room and right in this city. Uh, we have huge numbers of people who come from these cultures who can help us get our businesses established and get our, our, uh, our, our build, bridges built into these marketplaces. So um, another area, uh, why, why would you have a diversity policy in your company? Well, um, immediately think about your, uh, the, the, shape, the face of your workforce. Yeah, younger, much younger, completely different sorts of work requirements, much more interest in work-life balance, much more interest in mission, the mission of your company. It, um, millennials actually really, really care. They really want to work for a company that's doing something that they believe in. That's, that wasn't the case with my generation. We got up and went to work and came home. Uh, these y young, young people, my children, uh, they, they're just not prepared to do that. They're much more interested in, in contributing strongly to a company where they really care and where they really can see the future. And Jeff this morning, Jeff Ross, gave some extremely powerful examples of how very, very important it is to build a culture. That, that is exciting and energising for people and who want to, who, people who want to, uh, to be part of that. And uh, perhaps the third point about um, diversity is, is, the, um, is the face of the customer. And the customer is buying in different ways. The customer is, is, is many times, many, many, uh, for many of our companies, an offshore person. How well are we tapped in in our boardrooms and in our organisations and our senior management teams? To the, uh, to the voice of the customer offshore. I just talked to one of my friends before who um, is here, has just applied for a board uh, position in, uh, in New Zealand. Um, wonderful background, perfect for the job, uh, great experience offshore, many, many networks in many offshore markets, and uh, has been told that at 40 years old, he's too young. And it's just unbelievable that that, uh, that that could happen. In the US, there's now a major trend to employ 20-year-old, 25-year-old, 30-year-olds in boardrooms because they, you need to know what's happening. You need young people. You need the voice of younger people through, through your organisation and senior decision-making um, positions. So, um, again, uh, this is the uh, great opportunity for New Zealand, and how are we doing in, uh, in the diversity stakes? Well, there was a, um, a study recently about, uh, about uh, Auckland, done by the Omega Foundation, uh, talked to 42 uh, chief executives, um, asked about their diversity policy. Uh, were chief executives interested in diversity? Were they working on it? And the answer was a resounding no. Um, no, it's not regarded as strategic, not, not particularly important to my organisation. Uh, it's just another distraction, um, and you know this is uh, this this is in contrast um, to to what's happening offshore. And it is, and it it, it I guess the uh, the contention is that this is not optimising our economic opportunities and the opportunities for our businesses. Uh, if a chief executive uh, focuses on diversity, diversity will happen. Uh, if he starts to measure it, if he starts, he, I'm using he, um, if he if he or she starts to measure it, starts to focus on it and starts to bring it to the fore, make it a priority for the organisation as Stephen does, as Ralph Norris does, as, as I'm sure um, many of our, our, our great um, and, and enlightened um, leaders do, then, uh, then, it will, then it will change and you will have a, a more diverse uh, uh, senior, senior team. And, and more diversity through the whole of the organisation, but but it does need it does need focus and it does need management. So I'm, I, I thank you very much. I think uh, New Zealand is a um, is sitting on an incredible opportunity in this area. Uh, as I say, I come back a lot. Um, I don't I don't see uh, I don't see enough talk about our talent. I don't see enough focus on uh, diversity and on it and on the huge opportunity that re represents for our country. Uh, I, uh, and I would uh, really encourage you in closing to just think a little bit about this from your own point of view and, and, and think about ways of becoming, um, opening your own mind and, and becoming uh, aware of what's happening in this city and how many uh, wonderful opportunities there are to link in to, um, to a more diverse um, experience than, uh, than um, um, some of us may have at the moment. Thank you. Thank you.